The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, also known as the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, or some other <laughs> reordering of those words. Um, it's a useful bit of anatomy. This nerve is going to innervate the skin of the lateral thigh, and quite a big portion of the skin there as well. So it's worth looking at the anatomy for a couple of reasons because it comes from quite high up from the lumbar plexus. It takes an interesting route through here. How does it get into the thigh? Um, it can be compressed at points along its pathway. So when does it become superficial? Where might it become compressed? Also, if you are an, an anaesthetist, where might you want to access it? So you could block this nerve so that maybe a surgeon could take a skin graft from that region of the thigh. Um, also, there's a condition called uh, Moralgia Parasthetica, which is attributed to this nerve. Um, so what causes it? What does it feel like? Um, and that sort of thing. So we'll look to see where the nerve comes from, see where it runs in relation to other structures and where it goes to, all right? The anatomy of. <music> So the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh arises from the lumbar plexus. These are the lumbar vertebrae. Um, from between them, laterally, we see lumbar spinal nerves coming out from the spinal cord, and they come together to form a meshwork of nerves which go on and form other nerves to go on to other parts of the body. Um, and the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh um, deri is derived from the L2 and L3 spinal nerve roots. Now, um, this is the lumbar plexus here. And whilst these branches we're talking about are all branches of the ventral rami of the spinal nerves, we see in the lumbar plexus anterior branches and, and posterior branches. And, oh, that's it there. There's the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. This is coming from posterior parts of the ventral rami of spinal nerves L2 and L3. Okay, that's about as high a level of detail as we're gonna go into today. And then the nerve runs laterally out to, here we have the ilium, and now we're gonna have a couple of muscles in the way or nearby, we're gonna have iliacus sat on the ilium, and we're gonna have psoas major, both of those muscles are hip flexor muscles. So the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh is gonna be hidden by psoas major for part of its journey. This is what I'm talking about. So we're looking at the posterior abdominal wall here. There's the kidneys and so on. Um, here is the iliacus muscle covering the ilium of the pelvis bones, and this chunk of muscle here is psoas major. So then we will see the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve appearing from posterior to psoas major and then running around the pelvis, anterior to the iliacus muscle, actually deep to the, the fascia that's covering the ili iliacus muscle, the iliacus fascia. Um, and then it's going to run down to here, and then we've got this this limiter, this boundary between the abdominopelvic cavity and the lower limb, and this is the inguinal ligament. So the inguinal ligament is gonna run from the anterior superior iliac spine of the ilium to the pubis bone across here. So the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is gonna to have to run deep to the inguinal ligament to get into the thigh. And it does this quite laterally, Makes sense, I guess, lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. It does this quite laterally close to the anterior superior iliac spine. Um, so at that point then, it's pretty superficial. It's gone from being a very deep nerve back here to being very superficial. So you could access it here. So in fact, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is gonna move into the iliac fascia and then move deep to the inguinal ligament. And down here, we can see the fascia lata, the connective tissue stocking covering the lower limb. So it's gonna, as it passes through the inguinal ligament, come out the other side, actually deep to the fascia lata. I know fascia, it's one of those things we kind of ignore, but if I'm gonna talk about a nerve in any sort of detail, I'm gonna talk about the fascia if I remember to. Um, 
There are variations of this and uh, one of them is that the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve could actually pass through the inguinal ligament. Now the inguinal ligament being a significant connective tissue structure, well that might have effects on the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, right? This is what I'm talking about here, this lumpy bit. This is the anterior superior iliac spine here. So you've got the, the iliac crest here and it ends anteriorly at the anterior superior iliac spine or the asis. You can palpate this on yourself. So find the, that iliac crest, that bony crest, follow it anteriorly and then you find a lumpy bit, that's that bit there. And then your lateral femoral cutaneous nerve will be nearby and that's the inguinal ligament there running from the anterior superior iliac spine down to the pubis bone. So that is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve running deep to it. Right now we're in the lower limb. Oh no I have made a terrible faux pas. Sorry we've been talking about the right side of the body and then this is a <laughs> this is a left this is a left leg, so your brain has got to shift to the other side of the body. From a teaching perspective, this is kind of a good exercise for you, like to shift your spatial abilities to the other side, but it's not ideal when I'm trying to explain something, sorry. Okay, so left leg, there's the inguinal ligament again, so there's the anterior superior iliac spine, there is the pubis bone, this big nerve here is the femoral nerve, we're not interested in that one. The, the there we go. Lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is running around here. So it's quite close to the axis, runs deep to the inguinal ligament and then pops out here. Now this muscle here, this is sartorius curving around here. So it appears uh, superficial or anterior to sartorius, but <laughs> but deep to the fascia latus. The fascia latus covering this over, take the fascia lata away, you see the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve overlying sartorius. And shortly after it enters the thigh, it, div it divides into two branches, an anterior branch and a posterior branch. The anterior branch then will run on the anterolateral part of the thigh here to the skin, as far as the knee. So it's going to carry sensory information back from the kind of the, lat the anterior lateral skin of the thigh. And then the posterior branches, you might imagine, will run a little bit more posteriorly and will capture sensory information from the skin from the lateral and kind of more posterolateral, posterior lateral parts of the thigh. This is the iliotibial tract here. You can imagine the, the posterior branches as pretty much running with the iliotibial tract all the way as far as the knee. So that means then that that's the main job of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is to carry sensory information back from the lateral thigh, the thigh being the bit between the hip and the knee. And that's it, that's it, that's job done. So of course, yes, it is vulnerable to injury or its little branches are as it descends down here, the little twigs that the major branches give off. But the point at which the nerve is whole and most superficial is here. And here it might be compressed. Tight clothing, a tight belt. I mean, this is low for a waist belt, but like a, t a heavy tool belt could compress the nerve here. If you're wearing a heavy tool belt every day in the same position for a long period of time, right? Also like the lap part of a seat belt crosses across here. So normal use of a seat belt doesn't tend to cause this problem, but maybe, you know, a collision that uses the seatbelt and puts force through it can uh, compress the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve here. So that's the idea is that there is, a, there is a superficial site here where the nerve could be compressed by something. So bear that in mind if someone has sensory changes from the skin of the lateral thigh, um, pins and needles, pain, numbness, you know, a loss of sensation. Those changes to sensation are probably as a result of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve being compressed or injured at some point. And don't forget also that it is branching from the lumbar plexus, so it's possible that the compression could be higher up and near the lumbar vertebrae. Also clinically, um, as I said, if you're an anaesthetist and you want to block this region of skin for some reason, then 
it's quite accessible up here and anaesthetic can be applied nearby to block it. And if you were to, uh, sorry, I'm a bit of a fan of ultrasound right now because we've just bought a whole bunch of handheld ultrasound devices for teaching next year. Oh, and they're just so, such an amazing way of looking at live anatomy, right? You can, you can find this bony point, you can apply the ultrasound nearby, you will find the nerve and you can follow it up and down again. And if somebody has Moralgia Parasthetica, which is the name of that condition whereby altered sensation from the lateral thigh caused by damage to the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, blah, 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 all of that stuff, um, ultrasound is sometimes a diagnostic method of comparing the two nerves and seeing if there are um, pathological changes in the nerve. Uh, which might result from you know, long-term compression, that sort of thing. Obesity, uh, pregnancy, think about the path of the nerve. Um, those are also risk factors, risk factors for developing moralgia parasthetica. It's a good word, moralgia, it's kind of a new word for me. Meros means thigh, so we always talk about femoral, the Latin for thigh. Meros, apparently, is the ancient Greek for thigh. Algos, algos means pain. Anyway, <laughs> Meral Meralgia Parasthetica. Okay, so that's where the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve comes from. That's the path that it takes deep to the inguinal ligament, near the anterior superior iliac spine, very laterally, and then it gives off two branches that innervate the skin of the, the lateral thigh. Um, probably more than you needed to know, but you know, yeah, it's just one of those things that I think is quite cool, these nerves and where they run and how this might cause that and that might cause this. And it's the human body, isn't it? We've all got one. Um, see you next week.